stress me out. Hey, welcome back to Grit and Gym, special edition on a Saturday. We have Amber Dunlap here, Amber's our nutritionist, and we're gonna go through a little bit about why she got started and uh, about the nutrition presentation that's coming up this Tuesday that you definitely wanna RSVP for. We only have 40 people that, four, like 40, zero, yeah, that we can actually uh, take at the nutrition presentation. So uh, make sure that you RSVP as soon as you can. There should be a link somewhere around here I don't remember which direction it is, but you guys can tell me in the comments if you really want. But, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Hi! Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's training my energy up. <laughs> you can't laugh at me through this whole thing. I can't laugh at Why can't I laugh at you? Because it just makes me laugh. And then we're not going to get anything done. I think, it, I think it's fine. I like it, 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 a video of us laughing, there like, could be worse things than what, probably. Probably. We well, like, I didn't think either of them ever did that. We get in a fight. I don't want to do that. <laughs> um... My name's Amber. Um, I am the operations manager at Grit Gym, and I do all sorts of really boring things. Um, but <laughs> nutrition is the thing I do that's less boring. Okay. Yeah, that's the fun one. That's a, that's a, yeah. yeah. It just happens to be that there's some other things that uh, you're, you're stronger at than I am and that I absolutely hate and that you don't mind. That right? yeah. Truth. Yeah, truth. All right, so you're the nutritionist. Uh, you got your nutrition and uh, certification through Precision Nutrition. Uh, you've become a junkie of information around it. You got there by way of, like, why nutrition? Why nutrition? Yeah. So, oh God, my daughter's, what, six now. So That's crazy. I know, isn't it? I've worked for the gym for almost five years now. That's even crazier. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... After I had my daughter, I ended up with what's, what's called Graves' disease. It's an autoimmune disorder, um, basically where your immune system attacks your thyroid, um, like it's an invader. So your, your body is killing itself, essentially. Right. Yeah. So um, it took a while for me to get diagnosed with it, um, but once I did, I really wanted to take control of my health. I mean, I had to rely on doctors for a lot of things, but I wanted to do my part. Um, so. Nutrition became a big part of that. I wanted to make sure that I was fueling my body yeah. the best I could. What did the doc, like, uh, to hijack your story a little bit? Uh, <laughs> no, he should well, hijack my story. I don't even know what I'm doing. He's like a pro. I am that. I like to be behind the camera. That's normally where I am. When you guys see videos, a lot of times I'm the one holding it. She's the voice that, like, when she starts laughing at something yeah. that I said because it wasn't funny, but she thought it was funny. <laughs> That's me. Yeah, she's the voice. Yeah. But, uh, like, what did the doctors tell you at the time? Did they mention nutrition at all, or no. was that just something that you took off with? No, it's something I took off with. No, what, I mean, like, they, I mean, you know, medicine. They med you medicate, right? Like that's what they do. Like I. Well, that's what they're. Yeah, that's. Yeah, what they're, that's what they're taught to do. You know, medical doctors. Like right. your doctor of math is probably not who you, you were going to. Yeah. So um, I was give. So Graves' disease is a hype, a hyper thyroid. So that means that you know it's going. It's it's hyperactive. A hypo is when you hear like Hashimoto's. So like, Graves' disease is the opposite of Hashimoto's. If you know what that is. So <clears throat> what? Not anything. Why are you laughing? He's like, I told him not to do that. <laughs> um, so I like laughing. It's fun. Um, so they give you medication that suppresses your thyroid. Uh, my body didn't respond super awesome to it, so it was kind of an up and down. So um, you know, it's a, it's just all, you're always behind it. I guess is the way to describe it. You 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 get your blood tested and then you adjust after, but that doesn't yeah. really account for what's going on in real time. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, like medicine and exercise and all this kind of stuff. We're, really, we're just uh, gathering a bunch of data and then we're making the like an incredibly educated guess on what we hope will work. And if it doesn't, we go back to the drawing board. But uh, like, there was a lot of things. Like we've talked a lot about this. So you, you had Graves' disease. It was stimulated by. Uh, by the pregnancy and all of a sudden you had this autoimmune disorder it's like your thyroid's going nuts your heart rate's through the roof um like can you go through like like so you're a parent and you're dealing with this new thing like there's some like like what were some other things that happened along the way um some things that happened like because with the, like hyperthyroidism like your heart rate went through the roof right yeah so, so my resting heart rate was over 100. it used to be kind of like a joke like we before we knew it, i was sick like I just had a fast heart rate, and my husband would like joke all the time about it. He'd yeah. be like, "You need to slow down your heart rate." And I'm like, "What? I'm just laying here." Like, but it actually turns out I was sick. But it's pretty serious. My, still. Yeah. my friends had a lot of jokes. Actually, maybe really? Tiffany might watch this. So we should make fun of Tiffany. But like, <laughs> so 
my eye, the, the way I discovered I was sick is my eye started to literally bug out of my, my face. Like it would start to stick out. Um, and I remember going to my mom one day and being like, does this eye look bigger than this eye? And she's like, yeah, it does. And if you Google it, literally it's the only thing that makes that happen. So you the, mean Graves disease is the only yeah, thing that, yeah, yeah, Graves disease is the only real disease that's that makes That's the telltale sign. Yeah, well, not everybody gets it. It's called thyroid eye disease, but it is a symptom of it. It's crazy. But Tiffany used to make fun of me and be like, so before it got bad enough that you could really see the eye difference, um, we would take like pictures, like selfies, and she'd be like, Amber, stop making that face. <laughs> or my mom would be like, just look at the camera, stop doing that with your eyes. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm just taking pictures. But before it got, before it got bad enough that you could see it. I don't mean to laugh. No, like, it's funny. No, he can laugh, it's totally fine. Everybody should laugh. There was this kid that I grew up with that was cross-eyed. Yeah, he our, probably our, had Graves our, disease, you didn't know it. Our wrestling coach, he <laughs> like, yelled at him one time, and I just was thinking about it, and he was like, look at me when I'm talking to you, and he's like, oh yeah. Anyway, it was really funny. <laughs> That's right. Like, I I feel like that was my life. Yeah, they would make fun of me all the but, time. Before, but before you could see it in person, you could like pick it up a little. Like yeah. you know, on film, sometimes you can see it. Like you could pick it up in pictures. And I looked a little. I just looked a little off, and they would make fun of me because they thought it was just how I was posing. Like I was yeah. like doing like a weird buggy eye duck face thing. Or <laughs> like, like anyway, <laughs> that was a tangent. But like. um, but yeah. So my eyes started to bug out of my head. My resting heart rate was over 100. My blood pressure was high, and I lost a lot of weight. Um, Which sounds really good at right at first. It does sound good, right? But like, like it was like a like kind of a mind fuck though, right? Well, right. So I mean, we can talk about my weight, you know, on Facebook. That's fine. But normally, <laughs> like, I'm probably like 140, a size eight. Um, when I got really sick, I was down to pro just oh, maybe over 100 pounds in a size two. Which sounds great, right? Uh, and the whole world thought it was great. Everybody would tell me all the time, like, oh my God, you look so great. You just had a baby and I can't believe how small you are. Yeah. All the time. Everybody was doing that all the time. But in reality. In reality, the reason why I was 100 pounds in a size two was because I was super sick. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the whole world, but the whole world thinks that you're doing awesome. Yeah, and you it was look not awesome. And it was not but awesome. you're actually just really, really unhealthy on the inside. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's not like I just lost all my body fat and had like awesome muscle definition. Like I oh, lost. Oh yeah, that's yeah. You lost everything. I right? lost everything. I had I. I mean, I'm not a super small boned person. I'm a pretty average person. Like my skeleton actually needs more weight on it than <laughs> that to like be a, a strong, healthy, you know, person. Yeah. So you lost all your, you lost your muscle. You lost your, you, you lost fat, but you also lost muscle and your body's basically sitting there killing itself. Right. Um, and then you find out that, so then you got the diagnosis mm -hmm. and during this time, have, like, had you already started to kind of change your nutritional, like really dig into your nutritional lifestyle? I mean, I would say I scratched the surface. I mean, being in, being pregnant, you know, I mean, prior to being pregnant, I definitely was not what I would call the most health minded, most yeah. health minded person. Like, but you know, once you're like, oh my God, I have to carry a baby. I'm going to be a mom. I have to take care of this baby. All of a sudden you have kind of an have interest. An example. In, yeah. Right. You have this interest in being your uh, best self, a, right? A better human being. Yeah. A better person. And, and those yeah. things go along. Like, and I, I was like that. Like when I had my daughter, like I like made all her homemade baby food. Like she didn't eat anything from a jar. Like I blended up like butternut squash and stuff. Yeah. Like for real. Cool. So, yeah, so I started before that, and then once I got the diagnosis, I really felt like I needed to do everything I could for myself. Yeah, yeah. Because when it comes down to immune diseases, like, the medical field just doesn't really, they don't know a lot. No. It's I, a pretty unknown territory, right. so. I think that's one of the misconceptions, is the doctors really know what's going on, and we really have a good cue in on what's going on with the body, and we really don't. Like, uh... Like we kind of have an idea of some things that might work, but like they don't. Like it's a, it's. A, well, I mean, to put it like, so idea. think about this. So, um, it ended up. I guess I'm getting ahead of the story, but so what ended up happening because I couldn't. They didn't do. Wasn't. Re, they weren't really able to control it on medication very well. Like I would actually do really awesome, and I'd be able to go off medication, and then it would come back, and it was just an always up and down thing. So I ended up having my thyroid taken out. But so yeah. the the treatment for a disease that attacks your thyroid is to take out your thyroid. Yeah. Which is kind of a, like, kind of crazy. Right, it's not, like, you're just, ma you're masking. Thyroid symptoms. gets a lot of really bad, like, a, a lot of, like, 
misrepresentation, uh, you you need a thyroid. Like it's it's not you like you do need a thyroid. It's not like your spleen or uh, what do you call it? Uh, your, appendix your appendix or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a, yeah, <laughs> it's it's so like you're gonna die if you don't have it. Yeah, so I I, do, I mean I do I take medication every day. Which to and replace like it. we've talked about this before. Like like that's kind of a bummer. Like was it kind of like like yeah? Uh, well, you feel like because like, you did all this work right. uh, to change your lifestyle, to eat different, to you know, to live different, and, and you really dug into it. And like you're a huge questioner, yeah, you know, big learn, like <laughs> like like to learn a lot of stuff. Very curious person, right? Like it's kind of a bummer. Yeah, it was a total bummer because you feel like yeah, you you because you fought so hard, you know, to yeah. like do you know, I did the right thing. I haven't eaten any. <laughs> sugar or flour in months, <laughs> you know, and, you know, it still had to come out. So, yeah, I mean, the disease, they say, has a genetic component and then it's some sort of trigger, which for me, they think was giving birth. Um, so you have a predisposition mixed with lifestyle, mixed with a trigger is really like yeah. the thing. So it had to come out. I feel much better with it out, but it was a very, it was a very hard hard decision to make yeah yeah and then but that like, like the good and the bad is that you had to, you learned all this really great stuff about nutrition and i did um and <laughs> it led to all this other really good stuff um so what happened like after so after you had the surgery uh then you had the eye surgery then you had three eyes right right oh then yeah because people are probably surgeries. watching this being like her eye looks fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always forget that I always tell people like my daughter is gonna grow up and be like, why did she have these eye surgeries? They're all fine because <laughs> like all the pictures are like edited and like you can't tell. Um, but yeah, I've had eye surgeries to fix my eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, so so like life threatening disease, the the uh, like some things that like. And now she's good. She's here. Uh, and now you have to take the medication, but also like the, the lifestyle that you've been able to, to to develop with the nutritional habits led to all this health and all this knowledge around it. So now you're into. And then you went and got your certification, it right? Did. And the certification, like the certification that she got, is pretty intense. How many weeks was it? Oh God, I don't even remember. It's basically like going back to college. But yeah, anyway. it is like. I mean, like it's like a a textbook full of. Like, it's science. Like, it's not, like... Yeah, it's not, like, a bunch it's of not, opinion. Yeah, it's not, like... Yeah, it's not it's one not of those, like... like vegans. I don't want to be, like, one of those sham certifications. <laughs> but, like, it's a legit, very science-based. Yeah. But, like, uh, like, why go through all that? Like, why coach? Like, why, why get into actually trying to help people with their nutritional journey? Well, I think that, I mean... Like I said, from, from a health perspective, I think that it's, it is important that we all do what we can like what was our responsibility i mean things are going to happen along the way right like i'm gonna get my thyroid out like things are gonna happen people get sick yeah. but a lot of what we we do have more control yeah than, than we tend to recognize and what you put in your mouth is really probably the most important thing that you can do for your health honestly yeah. and then you know well, it's it, like if you think of like you put a like medication in your mouth once a day once a day once a day for a mm -hmm. month and the amount of effect that that has right. versus you're putting something in your mouth you know three times a day and these huge sums and the effect that that's going to have so yep. one little pill versus an entire meal three times a day that's going to add up to more than that that pill is the accumulated volume yeah. of effect absolutely yeah and then that like mixed with watching you know i'm like i'm a mom we just talked about that you know and my parents and watching people age and, and how you age and there's a huge difference between people that age really really vibrantly and people who don't you know and and i think that we could all age a lot more vibrantly if we made yeah. the effort to you know yeah I, I think this is an area like uh, nutrition is a really interesting area that people are interested in it but there's so much information out there that it gets outrageously confusing and it doesn't make any sense and uh, there's so much conflict and really like we look at it like after you like once you get like fairly educated in this you look at it and you're kind of like yeah I can get why they say that but they're just marketing or you know like yeah. you know what I mean um, well how much of it is is mindset and how much of it is yeah and and really a lot of it knowledge yeah and uh, like there, there's just so much out there so like like just giving people a little bit of clarity is that something that like you get some intrinsic value out of or like like oh anybody who knows me 
knows I love clarity. <laughs> Nothing makes me happier. You're, you're talking to someone, like, uh, people at Grit Gym kind of, uh, like, kind of have a little bit of a clue as to how literal I am, like, extremely literal. Like, Amber knocks me out of the water. Like, like, like crazy, like, uh, what? I'm, I'm, Why would I do that? I'm the, what? I'm the Spock of Grit Gym. <laughs> she is the Spock of Grit Gym, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, the Vulcan. That's really funny. But uh, I can't even do that thing. But like, uh, <laughs> can you do? It? What's that? The, this? Yeah. yeah, of course I can. I can't do. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, but like, what was it along the way for you? Because like, you didn't like. Like, would you have said that before you started your health journey that you had this impeccable nutritional lifestyle, or would you have said, like, you had some major holes, or where would you have put yours, and then what was it like as you went along? I would say it was just average. I mean, it was, I mean, so, yeah. I mean, I grew up. Well, what's average? Well, I mean, I grew up in a pretty, like, I would say, like, my mother was, like, we ate, like, almost, like, a very vegetarian, like, kind of diet. Like, she was health conscious. Like, we weren't allowed to, like, have a lot of sugar. Like, I grew up in a in that kind of environment. I don't know that... Well, that's our age, too. Like, the first real, like, yeah. sugar is bad yeah. happened in, like, the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, people thought it was, like, poison. Yeah. Our but, parents were, you know, like... No, I mean, Janet my mom, wasn't too bad, but... I, I would say my mom... Well, my mom tried really hard with the information available at the time. Yes. Yeah. It's just changed over right. time, you know? So I would yep. say, I mean, I was a restaurant manager for a lot of years, and I just spent a lot of time being busy and shoving food in my face when I had time. And From a restaurant, too. From a restaurant. usually isn't yeah. the greatest. Right. You know. So, I mean, it was, it was just a, a very standard American diet, like just what people who don't think about what they're eating eat, you know? Yeah. And then once I got scared straight... And started reading as much as I could and consuming as much information as I could. Um, you know, I went the paleo route for for, for a while. And um, you know, Adam and I have talked a lot about this. And and paleo is great on paper. Like yeah. you know, you should like the things that the paleo diet encourages are what I would say are pretty good choices. Yeah. The problem. Like the grass fed beef, lots yeah. of vegetables, lots of fruit. Uh, like keep your calorie uh, macronutrient dense foods to a minimum. Keep your macro micronutrient dense food to a maximum. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's good on paper. Yeah. Right. It's it, it is a good, it's a good, it's a good way to, to go about things. Totes. The problem being that it's very, very hard to live in the real world and eat a very, very yeah. strict, stringent diet. And we were talking about this before we started the show, but like uh, how, uh, like, uh, like some people go to these, like when they first start this and they're these, they go to these extreme levels. So they'll show up to some, like their friend's house for dinner, but they'll bring their own food. Right. Like that's what you, and, that's and what you have to do. That's like, that's just kind of being a jackass. Like, you know, it's like completely unnecessary. Um, right. but if you're going to eat like a hardcore paleo, that's what you would have to do because yeah. not everybody's going to, you can't eat lasagna. Right. And not, not on the menu. No. Um, which is really funny. There's certain things that, like, if you were to pick on the paleo diet, like, it's funny because, like, bread is actually uh, much older than bacon. Like, it, it, yeah. bread was invented way before bacon. Yeah, I mean, anyway. like, I, I, I do, I do, some, like, I, I would have told you that the, the caveman thing is more of, like, a mascot, not, like, a historical right. representation. Right, yeah. But, <laughs> no, I know that now. But, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I don't eat a paleo diet now. Yeah. I mean, but I do, I think the concept is a, is a good concept, mm -hmm. but I mean, there's also, things. but you did go to some extreme, did you go to extreme right at the beginning and then kind of to where you are now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I like, so, um, I love to intake a ton of knowledge and then like I go hardcore with whatever that knowledge is. And then like, I end up through my journey keeping what. Yeah. what's good and right. getting rid of the stuff that doesn't. And yeah. I kind of do that with everything. That's just kind of like yeah. my, yeah. That's what I, like, my so learning process. That, that, that right there is exactly why I ask you guys all the time. Like, like ask yourself, what is this serving me? And right. if it's not serving you, you don't keep it around. And if it but is you serving you, the, then you keep it around. And there's and you can do things without putting yourself in the box of doing all the things. Yes. You can keep the good stuff and get rid of the stuff that isn't serving you. Yeah, yeah. I think and people a, don't realize that. It, it's, right. not, it's not black and white. It's a journey. Yeah. 
Yeah, totally. Uh, which is a lot of like, like in this uh, presentation that we're gonna do next Tuesday, uh, which guys, if you can do me a favor, please click the share button, send this out, and write, come with me next Tuesday uh, to the uh, nutrition event out here um, to, to get more people to, to show up. Uh, we're gonna, we probably will max out, right? If we, we can only take a capacity of 40 people, so, uh, but you wanna be out here for that. Um, and uh, like the information is gonna be, like we're not going to give you any, any information that's controversial. We're going to give you stuff that like we can back up with science, we can back up with reason, we can back up with logic. But um, so you went to the extreme level, and now you come back to kind of like using what worked for you, using what didn't. Right. Uh, you went through the learning curve. Uh, it, like you meshed the the lifestyle of nutrition and mindset with the uh, wait, meshed the it. meshing. That's the meshing. Uh, with like, so like you use Western style medicine to enhance and, and the lifestyle to enhance each other. Right. Yeah. You didn't right. draw a hard line right between the, right I, behind, between the two. I, especially when it comes to nutrition, I, anybody who does draw hard, I mean, hard lines in general, it's, it, it, it's misinformation for the most part. I mean, there isn't hard lines. Yeah. It's, uh, there's not a lot of hard lines. Yeah. There's better choices. You can always make better choices. But there's always, there's, there's room. Mm -hmm. It's a very gray science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really we don't, like, uh, the next 10 years are, of nutrition are going to be really interesting because, like, uh, there's no, more diabetics now than there ever has been in the history of the world. Uh, so, for one, that gives us more people to look at. Diabetes is a really interesting disease to, to look at from a nutritional standpoint. Yeah. Also, we can collect more data uh, because of where technology is. Uh, so, our sample sizes are bigger and everything. So, the information that comes out in the next 10 years will be uh, much, much better than has ever been. And I, and I almost guarantee you that there's going to be a lot of stuff that is completely dispelled. Uh, and it'll be, there always is, right? Yeah, there always is. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, and, and uh, there'll be more clarity brought about uh, about uh, on a, a lot of different topics, like the six meals a day thing. Uh, when it first came out, it was like everybody was like, "Oh my God, this is like a new world! Like everybody's got to eat six meals a day." And we looked at it a little bit further, and we we're like, oh, "Okay, well, that's why this works, and that's how it works." Okay, so it doesn't really matter. You can eat three meals a day or six meals a day. Um, but anyway, so so you had this whole thing, and now you're and now you're coaching people uh, because of you know seeing how people age, uh, seeing the effect of nutrition on their on their bodies and on their lives, and what it's done for you and the knowledge that you build it up. Did you have a moment where it was just like where it came down to like I have to do something, or was it just like kind of a gradual thing for you to just like, that led you here to when I started coaching? I don't know. I don't know. I think that. I think that you encouraged me to coach because I, because of what I'd been through and like all the knowledge I collected and I, I, you know, I would share that knowledge with people anyway. Yeah. And, and Adam's like, you should be really doing this. Yeah, you should. Yeah. <laughs> you should be sharing, we should be sharing this information that you're just like casually sharing. And we should actually share it. Yeah. I think is how it happened. <laughs> um, I didn't remember if that's what, like, I didn't know that. So that's, that's you did it. Well, uh, like, I'm sure that I encourage I him along the way. I should stroke his ego. <sighs> sitting here. Well, nah, just keep going. Now, um, <laughs> now I get really awkward when people do that, actually. So uh, that'd probably be enough. But like, I think you should. Like, you got you. Like, we would talk about things, and it was just like, wow. Like, she's pretty objective. Like, she's really objective about this. And we would talk about other things, and I'd be like, uh, wow. She like gives two different perspectives on the same on the same now idea. Now he's doing it to me. And <laughs> and uh, she would look at things uh, and try to analyze them, and she would uh, you know, and she would talk with me about things, and and she would talk with me about how she would talk with her friends about nutrition and helping them. It's like you obviously want to help people. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't know that that was that big of a deal, but uh, like, I'm, I'm cool with it. I don't know. I mean, I just, I don't know. I guess I didn't, my, you've got to realize like my role in life, this is like an Amber counseling moment, I guess, but like <laughs> my role, my role in life, I, I have a very, so I, I, in all aspects of my life, I have a very like support role. Yeah. So it doesn't really like, I want to help everybody. That's what I do. Like I, I, that's like literally my job is to be like the support person for lots of people, you know, and it doesn't, and I'm the one behind the camera, you know, I'm not the person who you will have, like, I'm, it's just not in my nature to be like, Hey, it's not, I, got, either, I got a good thing yeah. going. <laughs> you guys need to check it out. Like, you know, he's a bush. <laughs> The support role, but like everybody, like like uh, I, I think that's what a coach does, though. Like a, like a coach, a coach, a coach's job is to get you from point A to point B. 
Yeah, so like in the nutrition category, like people want to eat better so that uh, they can live better, right? Sure. Yeah, so you're coaching them how to do that. Like, yeah, that but, you is have, the but you do have to step out and take a leap of faith to do that. To you be, mean on their part? No, I'm, I'm like to, to be like to offer your coaching to people. Yeah. To be like, I have what I'm saying is. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. But it is. Yeah, I agree. It is important. You should listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, <laughs> like, like anybody that just subscribes to just like one really hardcore like uh, uh, like way of eating or one really super hardcore nutritional like paradigm or whatever you want to call it, like that's a person you probably want to stay away from. You want a person that yeah. has tried paleo, that has tried vegan, that has tried uh, uh, like Atkins, that has tried, you know every different type of thing and then come back to the middle and been like, okay, well, this is what I'm going to take from there. This is what I'm going to take from there. Well, this is what I'm going to take from there. Cause then you can, then you're, then you're a chef. You're not just a, you're not just like <laughs> sure. a peon. I will say in people who are listening might think like, it's just easier to have somebody give me a nutrition plan. That's yeah. a really, I'm hijacking your show right now. Sorry. No, please but like, go with what you're about to say. It, we get it all the time. Like, yeah. oh, I just give me, just tell me what to eat and I'll eat it. Yep. And that's, that's great, right? It's easier for you. It's easier for me, quite honestly, <laughs> to just hand you a piece of paper and be like, eat this. Because yep. if you ate what I wrote on it, you'd get results, no problem. But the problem is, is someday I'm not going to write you a nutrition plan and you're going to have no idea what to make or cook for yourself. Or when you go to a restaurant with your friends or when you, you know, when you live in the real world. Like it doesn't, that, that meal plan doesn't teach you anything. It doesn't yeah. give you any skills. You don't build any wins. You don't. Yeah. That piece of paper sitting on the counter that's telling you what meal to eat that night is not going to cook itself. And especially when you've just done a 12 hour shift at work, you've got two kids screaming at you. Uh, you haven't taken a shower in three days and you, you, uh, you didn't get any alone time for the last like three years. <laughs> you know, it, like you're completely stressed out. That meal plan is not going to do shit for you. You've still got to make that food. So, like, yeah. there's much, much more to this than just here's a meal plan. And that's just the logic and reason side of it. Like, you look up the, the research on people just being handed a meal plan and how successful they are, it's basically zero. Well, you're successful at first, right? Like, that's the thing. If you make the meals. Yeah, if you make the meals. Yeah. That's how all of these things work. Yeah. It's instant gratification, which is sexy, but it's it's not sustainable. Yeah. And, uh, like, it, what we're going to go through over in the, in the presentation is not something that is just... Uh, a flash in the pan, a six-week deal. It's about how do you create sustainability? Uh, you know, and uh, like there's there's three big secrets that we're going to go over in that, but that's what they're based around. It's like how do you make it so that it can be sustained for the your the entirety of your life? Yeah. Because you're not doing it, like what's the point? Like, right. Well, I mean that is the thing, right? How many people start and stop and start and stop and start and stop because it's too hard, it's too stringent, it's too like you can't follow the rules all the time, so mm -hmm. you you quit and. Or yeah. you'll start on Monday because you already ruined it and it's Thursday. Or, yeah. You know, right. I mean, it, it's, ter it, it's terrible for all of our bodies to do that, yeah. you know. And that is it's why, not a way to live. Yeah, and like, when we do our nutrition course and it's only six weeks long, that's why we do that is because it's a six really intense weeks. And then, we'll, and then we wait for a short period of time so that you have to do it on your own because right. that's where you learn. Yeah, because we're going to – I mean, we have a level two that we – we do after the level one where mm -hmm. people will regroup with the knowledge that they started with and see where they're at and then go on from there. But you got to live it. It's your life, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I can't be there with you all the time. They <laughs> cook your food and be like, eh, not a good choice. Yeah. yeah that's the, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with coaching is like, uh, I should get a buzzer. Like I can, like I can, I can tell people what to do in the gym. I can, like we can exercise, we can work out five hours a day, uh, or we can work out five hours a week. That gives us 163 hours of non-work and 160 or, and, and five hours of work. So you got 168 hours in the week, work out for five. Now we're uh, we still got 163 hours that you can eat like junk and, and not make any progress. Right. Yeah, so, and so how do you, how do you make it full circle? Well, right. And I mean, you can't, it's very hard to, to out exercise poor nutrition. Yeah. It's real hard. Real it's a real hard. hard. It's real a real hard, hard game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the things I think that people fall into, like, kind of, not fall victim of, but, like, eventually nutrition just kind of gets boring if you make the same things all the time. Like, it just is. It, we've all been there. Yeah, we've all been there. We're, we're <laughs> like, oh, well, uh, what are we going to have tonight? You want meatloaf again? Yeah, we've had, but you've had meatloaf <laughs> for, like, the, on Thursdays for the last, like, 10 weeks, and it's been the same. It's, like, bored. Bored. Yeah. Need something else. 
So um, that's why in the, uh, in the presentation we're going to go over some of this stuff. Uh, so I'm getting a little too far into it, but anyway, anything else you want to, we're, we're about at 30 minutes, so. Are we really? Yeah. That goes fast. flies when you're having fun. So where are you, <laughs> <laughs> what's the end? Um, what's anything the end? else that like, like big thing that you want to get across to everybody about the nutrition stuff? Um, gosh. I feel on like the, that's that's like a on hard the spot, on the spot. On the spot, it's got to well, change the world. Well, number one, you should come to sentence. the nutrition presentation on Tuesday. <laughs> yes, that's that's the takeaway. Yes. Um, beyond that, um, don't look at nutrition. Don't be so stringent. Don't look at it as a box. Like I said, like like I said, don't don't you don't have to subscribe to one philosophy, follow all the rules to a T, or quit. Yeah. Like that's not that's not how you need to do it. Yep. And anybody that tells you that you have to do anything, you have to eat six meals a day, you should never eat a carb ever again, or, you know, whatever these crazy rules are, like, that's not, that is not how you have to, you aren't going to live the rest of your life, though. Yeah, and if you'll, you, you ever notice, take a look at those people's uh, stuff that they say, they'll guarantee it. And, uh, and I guarantee you that they're full of crap. Like it's well, like, we guarantee it when you do when you lose yeah twenty we pounds in six weeks and then we you guarantee get, results but, but, they, like, but they don't guarantee it long term because you probably yeah. gain thirty and ten right <laughs> but anyway yeah all done yeah, yeah. that's Amber <laughs> <laughs> but now guys uh, please uh, like comment share send this out to everybody that you know uh, definitely come out to the nutrition presentation. It's going to be on Tuesday at 7 p.m. We'll have some food up here on the on the desk that everybody can uh, come in, uh, partake in. And we'll wait about 15 minutes. Uh, we'll kind of just uh, shake hands, get to know everybody. Uh, and then we'll start the presentation. The presentation will last 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, and then afterwards, we'll do the same thing that we did in the beginning. And then everybody will go home with their lives changed and everything will be great. That's the hope. Anyway. Uh, that's what we do. <laughs> Changing lives. Changing lives. One presentation at a time. Oh, that's cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Anyway, please uh, slap the share button. Send this out to everybody you know. And we'll see you on Tuesday. All right.